What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, we're gonna be going over what you can do to kind of clean up your WordPress installation a little bit more. And this is some of the things I do on just about every single uh, install that I do. So there's gonna be some things here that you're gonna to wanna to take, some things you wanna leave behind, and there's probably some stuff that's missing. So as I'm doing this video, let me know down in the comments what you would uh, add to this process as well. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, the first thing that we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking a look at kind of like what comes, like what am I gonna be looking for when I am cleaning up my WordPress site? So if we were to take the just kind of like default installation of WordPress and just to like kind of drive the point home here real quick, all I've got is I've got the Git header, Git footer, and we can even zoom in a little bit here get header, get footer, and just like a default loop. So all it's really outputting on the front end here is just the header, the footer, and then the kind of title in permalink. So nothing fancy here. And so when we take a look at the source, there's like all sorts of things that are still kind of happening inside of the, um, in the DOM here. Uh, we are not logged in. All right, we are, well, we shouldn't be logged in. Eep. All right, now if we refresh, there's gonna be less stuff. So we're not logged in, so the like admin bar and all that kind of stuff should uh, not be inside of here. So we should be seeing what a non-logged in visitor should be seeing here in the DOM. Um, so right away, you're gonna notice a couple of things. Uh, the first thing um, is probably this uh, set of emojis. I never use emojis <laughs> on these sites. Um, I instantly get rid of them. There's some stuff here from the block library. So like in Gutenberg and whatnot, those are things that I'm probably not gonna be using. Um, maybe you are. So like take all this with a grain of salt. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just run it over here into my functions.php and I'm gonna add a couple lines that look a little something like this, which is actually um, going to remove the action that is uh, printing the emoji detection script and also all of the emoji styles. So if like people are using emojis in the comments or whatever, it's going to actually be able to render those, like detect them and then render them and style them the way that they need to be styled. So that right away gets rid of a couple things. So if we were to uh, save that, come back here, all of a sudden we're down a couple lines, which is exactly what we're wanting here. Uh, the next thing is, is that sometimes you're not gonna be using the blog which is totally understandable for WordPress sites. It's not just a blog, it's also a CMS. So if you're wanting to get rid of the, like the feed and stuff like that, let's see if we can look for feed or RSS. Gosh, where is that? Um, all right, did I save it? I saved it, that's why. Um, and then if we look, feed, or that's probably gonna be in the blog, sorry. So if we go back, and then actually go to hello-world. I don't know why caps lock is on. And if we open it up here, yeah, uh, slash feed, there it is, right there. Um, so sorry about that delay. Yep, it's right here. So this is the thing that we're wanting to get rid of. So this is not something that's going to appear on every single page. We're gonna be more on like the blog section um, so if we were to add these things in, just uh, delete the feed links and feed links extras, then we have now gotten rid of that. Uh, next up is that there are th certain things that you're also gonna wanna get rid of. Again, this is something you may or may not want to, but I typically get rid of it. And it is the WP embed. That's when you're like dropping in like, I don't know, SoundCloud links and whatnot. Like these are the kind of things that I'm just like, I not really gonna be using that kind of stuff. Like you know, everything needs to be fast. Everything that's on the, in my DOM needs to be there for a very specific reason. And if it's not there, or if I don't plan on using it, I'm going to get rid of it. So right now we have this WP embed uh, min.js. So if we want to get rid of that, all we got to do is on the add action of WP food footer, just toss in WP and Q script, um, D and Q, DQ script, goodness. Um, and then toss in the string of WP embed. So some other things that we might wanna get rid of. Let's uh, refresh here. We talked about the block library. So if you're not gonna be using Gutenberg, you're gonna be using ACF or something else like Elementor or another page builder like that, you're probably not gonna want this uh, CSS file in there. There's just no need, so why take the time to load it? Um, again, also if you're gonna be getting rid of the like RSS feed because you're not gonna be using the blog, you probably wanna get rid of the comment replies. Um, so yeah, you can technically like turn off like the comments in like the admin, but instead of doing that on every single page, you can just like straight up remove that. Um, or if you're planning on like 
you know, killing the comments altogether and then using discuss or something like that, you can also just do this, you know? Um, so we're gonna get rid of the block library, which we just saw, and we're also gonna get a comment reply. Did I already save? So there's comment reply right there. And then the block library is up there. So if we save this and refresh, now we shouldn't have the block library and we shouldn't have the comment min. So now we've gotten rid of those things as well. Um, so right there, we've already like gotten rid of a ton of different things. And when you're working with like larger and larger WordPress sites, you, you, I mean, if the site's pretty small, you can get away with this. Like it's not gonna be like a game changer. Like it's not gonna kill your performance or anything like that. But, you know, when you're starting to like, you know, do like maybe like WooCommerce sites or you've got a lot of traffic and you're needing like every single millisecond to count, these are the type of things that you want to like make sure that you are getting rid of. Um, these last few things are just constant definitions. A lot of these uh, you're probably already familiar with, but I thought they'd be good to kind of include in here as kind of like a bonus. Um, so with this core upgrade skip new bundled. So when anytime that we're like, um, gonna, on, let's go to WP admin real quick and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Oops, go back, take me back, WP dash admin. Um, if we're gonna go into the admin, you've always probably seen like anytime that there's like a, you know, the new year rolls around and you get a new like theme. We've got 2019, 2020, 2021, all that kind of stuff. And if you've like got a custom theme like I have right here, clean up, you're probably not gonna want any of these things. So you can go in and every year, you can go in and you can delete the new one that they come out with and you know, it keeps your bundle size small. Like if you're gonna be, you know, moving things, if you're not like in a, in like deploying things in like uh, Git or anything like that, not everything's tracked in Git, you're just kind of just like maintaining a site the way that it is. Um, if they were like upgrading WordPress in the admin, you probably don't want it to throw in a new theme for you or anything like that. So that's what that's gonna do. Core upgrade, skip new bundle. It's not gonna download new themes when you are um, upgrading to the newest ver WordPress version. And then these two, I would say are pretty good. Now you're gonna wanna like play with this number here a little bit, but WP post revisions. Um, oh gosh, that's not the right one. So there's WP post revisions. Um, Let's see here, the constants. You can set the number um, and then you can say, so there shouldn't be two, there should just be the one. Um, so WP post revisions, if you set it to true, it's gonna store every single post revision. If you store it to false, then it's going to not store any post revisions, except the one on autosave per post. And then if you actually give it an integer, then you can, um, tell it how many post revisions to save at a time and then it'll just pop off the last one or the oldest one as a new one comes in. So like that's gonna be one thing that kind of keeps things clean from like a database perspective. You can get a lot of post revisions very quickly if you're not limiting them here in um, the definition. Now, these aren't gonna go in the functions.php. This is for the WP config. So if we were to back up just a little bit and just go into the WP config, you can just kind of come down here and drop these definitions in here. And so you can either do, I don't want any post revisions um, or I want five post revisions. So whatever kind of like suits your needs a little bit better, um, I would strongly recommend tossing those guys in there. Just keep things nice and tidy. Now there's some more things that you could do, but these are kind of some general ones that I typically do on most of my sites, especially if they're not blogs. So if you have any extra things that you feel like could be added to this list, drop a comment in below and I'll uh, make a note of it. So appreciate you all watching. If uh, you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. Um, links in the description. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.